Well, let's, uh, let's start looking at forward rates. And uh, it can be quite intimidating, uh, especially when uh, a lot of the mathematical notation is put to this. It can look rather intimidating, but the whole concept of a forward rate is actually pretty simple. Let's, uh, let's take two payments here. We have, let's say we have a two-year uh, bond, a two-year annual bond at 3%, or a two-year investment at 3%. And let's say down here we have a three-year investment at 4%, and we'll consider just a $100 example here. So in two years at 3%, this $100 will grow to 106.09. I think that's easy to figure out, right? It's just the 100 multiplied by 1.03 squared, since there are two years. So at the end of year two, we'll have 106.09. For the three-year investment, we have $100 here, and it will grow to... 112.49. Why? Because we're getting four years, uh, sorry, three years at 4%. So it's 1.04 to the power of three. I think that is fairly easy to see. But here is where the forward rate lies. It's called an implied forward rate, and we simply just write it as IFR, the implied forward rate. And the first notation we'll put is the, is when is in two years, so we'll put a little two at the bottom. And for how long? Well, since it's for two years to year three, it's a two, one. So I'll write that out bigger over here so that you can see what I've done. The implied forward rate, two years out for one year. So we read that as a when what. So the implied forward rate when in two years. For what? A one year, uh, a one year term. The two year and the three-year are telling us something about what the interest rate will be during this period of time. That's called the forward rate, and here's how we figure it out. Since we're talking about an annual coupon, let's just say, let's, we'll assume we'll start with annual. What we're saying is that at the end of year two, we have 106.09. Well, we can invest that at some interest rate, and that interest rate will equal 112.49. So, if a two-year is paying 3% and a four-year or and a three-year is paying 4%, if that's the rates that are in the market, that means the market expects the implied forward rate to be R. Because we can invest 10609 at the end of year two for one year, and we should get 11249. If we don't, that sets up an arbitrage opportunity. I think you can see that. If, if we do not get that, it sets up an opportunity to either borrow uh, at the two-year rate and lend at the three-year rate, or borrow at the three-year rate and lend at the two-year rate. So because it sets up an arbitrage opportunity, it will result in a forward rate for year four. So all we have to do now is solve for R. Well, 1 plus R, if we divide both sides by 106, uh, 0 0.09, 1 plus r equals 1.0603. So that means that r equals 6.03%. And the notation we write it out as, it's a 2y, 1y equals 6.03%. That's how we write a forward rate, is, is you just write it out as 2y, 1y, or IFR21. What this means is, um, when in two years, what? Uh, a one-year uh, investment, or a one-year loan, or a one-year borrowing. So it's uh, written as when what. So whenever you see these terms, that's what it means. When in two years, what? A one-year loan. So we can see that, that if we invest in a two-year rate at 3%, and then we invest at a one-year rate after that at 6.03%, it is the same end result as investing for three years at 4%. The two spot rates implies that this one year rate, two years from now, should be 6.03. If it is not, it sets up arbitrage opportunities. And where there's arbitrage, people will come in and arbitrage that opportunity away such that the forward rate will equal that. Isn't that interesting? So that's annual but we have nothing here saying that this is this has has to be annual what if it were semi-annual let's see what happens with the semi-annual uh, uh, rate so what we have in the semi-annual is we have our original investment 100 
1.015. We're just going to do the two year. And because it's 3%, that means every six months we're going to get 1.5%. And there are four periods, right? And so that's what we'll have at the end of two years. But it will have to grow at 1 plus r squared. Remember now, because there are two periods in this term, 1 plus r squared, uh, to equal what we get on the bottom here, which would be 100 at a rate of 1.02 to the power of 6 because it's a three-year semi-annual now. So this has to equal each other. So all we have to do now is solve for r. We will get here 106.1364 multiplied by 1 plus r squared will equal 112.62. Divide both sides by 106, we get 1 plus r squared equaling 1.06105. Take the square root of both sides, 1 plus r will equal 1.03009. So r equals 3.009, but that's for a semi-annual period. Remember, that's for a semi-annual period. This is semi-annual. So we have to multiply it by 2. So the two-year, one-year, with semi-annual compounding implied is 6.0184. We've gone from 6.03 down to 6.018. So let's take it all the way to where, uh, to where we should be, which is continuous compounding. And let's see what happens with continuous compounding. So all we're doing now is compounding these cash flows continuously. So the first one is an investment of 100. And since we're compounding continuously, we know it's e to the rt. So what's our r in this case? Our r is 0 0.03. What's our t in this case? Our t is 2. 2 years. e to the rt. And then we would multiply that by, see, 106.9 was here. We multiplied it by 1 plus r. We would multiply it by the next year's rate, the 1 plus r. But since it's compounded continuously, we multiply it by the e to the, the unknown factor, which is r. And for how many periods? It's only one period, one year. So there we go, one year. So it's e to the r must equal, what do we have on the bottom? We have 100 e to the rt. What's our r? Our r is 0 0.04. Rt is 3. So all we have to do is just solve for this now. We'll, we can solve this factor right here. We can solve that. We get 106.1837. We still have our unknown, our e to the r. We'll drop the 1 because it's just e to the r equals. And we can solve this. That's easy calculator work, right? 1112.75. Divide through. Uh, we get e to the r equaling 1.06184. Take the natural log of both sides. Gives us r. And we're going to 1.06184. So r will equal 6%. So look at what happens. As we move from annual to semi-annual, we could have done a quarterly and a monthly to show that it will limit, in, in, in the limit, continuously compounded to 6%. That's important. Now that I talk about limits here, that's important. I just wanted to make a, 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 a take a long way around to show that as we get to continuous compounding, the implied forward rate will limit to some point so that we know that we can use uh, uh, a much easier uh, derivation to get to a forward rate if we know it's the end result of a limit. All right, so now that we know what the forward rate is, and we know that the forward rate must exist because if it didn't exist, there would be arbitrage opportunities, so the forward rate must, must fit mathematically into this. That's why we say it's an implied forward rate. It doesn't exist in the market. It's implied by the existence of a two-year and the existence of a three-year spot rate, you can imply what the one-year rate will be two years from now. That's what a forward rate is. Let's see how useful it is. Mm -hmm.